Hi everyone, it's Happy Vibe Hunter here. Earlier this year, I put out a video about Alipay, high speed train, and Chinese phone number, which received a lot of support from a lot of people, so thank you very much. And it also raised a lot of questions and concerns about these apps. The most concern is about if there's no internet or Wi Fi, will Alipay work? I can assure you that without internet, basically none of the apps works in China. The second concern is about if the Alipay account is registered with an overseas phone number and linked with an overseas bank card, would that still work? In my previous video, the account I used in that video is registered with an Australian phone number and linked with an Australian national bank card. That actually works. I can't guarantee that Alipay will work with all banks in, in the world. So if, if Alipay doesn't work with your bank card, maybe try another card from another bank. But it also brings up today's topic, WeChat Pay. I'm going to show you how to set up WeChat with an overseas phone number and linked with an overseas bank card. With Alipay and WeChat, it actually covers me 99% of my daily expenses while I'm in China, including online shopping, public transportation, uh, buying tickets, airfare, hotel, everything. Now, I would say that in most of the tourist destinations, merchants will accept both Alipay and WeChat. And in the smaller towns, in the old streets and rural areas in China, WeChat probably used more than Alipay. So let's have a look at how to actually set up a WeChat with an overseas phone number and an overseas bank account. So now let's start signing up a WeChat account. Uh, sign up with mobile, of course, yes full name to put in your name whatever it is I'm just gonna say use my initial LD and then from here China mainland let's go with Australia Australia and then phone number okay and then go next password I'm gonna put my password and make sure to tick the bottom one agree terms and conditions you can read that but that's just not my thing WeChat privacy policy oh, that's where your game finger comes so you can press lock quicker. Okay, and then from here you read, and then you next. Security record, in order to protect WeChat from spam, this registration requires further verification to prove you are human, of course. Okay, to prove I'm a human, fantastic. Pin trees in the winter snow? I'm pretty sure that's winter snow. Trees? These are made of trees, some of them, but they're not trees. Okay, next. What's the we want to protect? Okay, 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 great. Okay, great. Verify mobile, of course. So it's gonna set a code. Now, I do have my internet open. I have my Australian SIM card inserted, um, but I, I I don't have international roaming with my Australian phone card. I think this uses uh, internet data. So see, there we go. So I never used international date uh, roaming with my Australian phone number. I always received messages by internet internet data. Okay, so I'm gonna go next because I want to get an account as soon as possible. Okay, I don't know. Ah, uh, whatever. Let's go. Okay, WeChat privacy policy, what, why? Oh, okay, anyways, read, that done. All right, next, let's go next. Weixin service, Weixin means um, WeChat in Chinese. That's the Chinese version. Do it, done. Authorized to enable Weixin services, whatever the fuck. Allowed, oh, I shouldn't swear. Anyways, WeChat team. Okay, oh, now it's ready to use. Wow, look at that. Ooh. Okay, let's uh, bind the... Let's bind the, the card. Um, let's see. Oh, my WeChat ID looks so stupid. WeChat ID. So I want to change it. But it says that the only credential for your account, it can only be changed once per year. Of course, I don't mind. Oh, okay, I need the password before I change it. Okay. Okay, verify. So enter new WeChat ID. Okay, I'm going to go happy vibe hunter. Happy Vibe Hunter, next. Okay, okay. Oh, cool. Now it's, people can search me on this WeChat. 
I'm gonna bind this WeChat account with my Australian bank card. So for the, for the main page of WeChat, click me, and then pay and services, and then click money. And it's gonna ask you to enable payment options. Now, you gotta tick yes, enable, and add a card. Okay, card number. You can also use the, I think this might be the quickest way, okay? Now, all you have to do is next. Okay, enter card information. So when everything's done, it asks you to agree. So just to agree. Now, this payment password is gonna be, every time you use the QR code when someone scan you to actually pay for something, you will have to put into this code, okay? So it's different from the WeChat login password. Now you have to put in twice. Okay, added, fantastic. Now you can use the international bank card for payment on WeChat. See, you, you see that uh, it actually shows you that you can use international payment for WeChat Pay. Okay, international card. Okay, now enable. What? Enable. Okay, now put in the password. Only use this for making payments to merchants. Do not send this code to other people. Okay. So as a payment tool, WeChat Pay, the only two functions I think that is useful as a foreigner traveling in China, is actually use the QR code payment and the DD in the functions. Because comparing to Alipay, uh, Alipay is more like an international payment option. It's dedicated to Chinese people and the foreigners because it has a built-in translation function. Um, but in WeChat, a lot of the programs, even though you can find the, let's say, public transport code, it's still in Chinese. A lot of the mini programs are in Chinese and they don't have a translation program. So unless you understand uh, Chinese, it's going to be really hard to use them. Now, this is a big building and there's some small shops here. I wouldn't say this is a busy big city and um, I would say probably close to a rural area you will find all of these shops even in big cities in Shanghai as well. Okay, so that's the you know, store. I'm going to show you. I'm sleeping. So from here, that's the Alipay, which is blue square with a QR code, and that's the WeChat Pay. A lot of shops they only have the WeChat Pay, they don't have this one. So I'm gonna show you this. Lobat, Lobat, how much? Three thousand. Three thousand. Okay. So just get the phone now. So this little plus sign on top, and then go scan, and then just go scan this one. For a small shop like this, a lot of times you have to type in the number and just wait for it. Okay, so it says the that's my visa number. If you don't want this one, you can change to whatever card you add in. So you can choose the card and then put in your password. As you can hear as well, so the boss knows that the money is into their account. So that's pretty easy, pretty simple as well, as long as you know how much this is. Um, if you don't know the price and the boss don't speak English, you can just hand them the phone, they will type in a number, um, and that's automatically in RMB, which is Chinese Yuan. Now we're gonna catch the um, a DD. So with the phone here, let me put my let me put my water away first. If you want to go to catch DD, just go me pay and system and then go to the bottom normally at travel and transportation you usually should have DD ride hailing and that's automatically in English I don't know why um, maybe because the app I downloaded on my on my app is actually in English um, and I before I actually registered with my Australian phone number so now let's call it I'm gonna go into Tian let me do that lucky city there we go soon the no, I'm gonna I'm gonna be here actually. I'm gonna get off here. Yes. Nice. Okay, confirm destination. Just wait for it. Now one tap locking. Okay. Yes, one tap. Now that's my Australian phone number. I'm signed in. Perfect. Okay, 18.7 yuan. That's a good price. It's not peak hour. Let's do confirm request. There we go. 
九一四七。So what happened is when you go on the car, you gotta always give the driver the last four digits of your phone number. So the trip's finished. Uh, if you look at the phone, just wait for the driver to complete the trip. There we go. Uh, 1870. Okay, let's cross the road first. Now, with everything uh, here, I know that the very end it says in Chinese, but it's okay. I'm going to just go pay at the end, the blue bar. So, this is uh, go directly to WeChat Pay because you, you open this DD program in WeChat, you gotta use WeChat Pay. If you open in um, Alipay, you gotta use Alipay. But if you open the DD program as its own, like the own uh, DD app, then you can choose WeChat Pay, bank card, uh, the Alipay. There's a lot of other options. Uh, so from here, you can choose a payment option. If you don't want a car, you can choose something else. But I only got one car registered, so I'm gonna use this card. Uh, and then put in your own pa payment password. So done. The exchange rate, I'm not sure how the actually works exchange rate, but I think it works out as pretty good rate, I think. Um, you can check your bank uh, to see if that exchange rate is something that you wanted. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's, um, it's better than you go, go into cash exchange and it's better than you take money out of the ATM because they charge you for, I don't know, processing fees or, or bank fees, whatever. So this is the supermarket in Yangui. So from here, we're going to use the go to pay and services, go to money. Got it. Okay, from here. Okay, yeah. I got to actually go to press this first. So it shows you that's the time. Okay. Okay, done. So that's pretty simple if they just scan you. Overall, I would say if you're an overseas traveler and don't understand Chinese, your most used payment method will be Alipay and WeChat Pay could be your backup plan. And cash, well, it's always good to have some cash in you, but if you have a, a full note of 100 yuan RMB, if you pay some smaller versions, they probably don't have enough change for you and they not, may not receive the, they may not accept the payment 